Good morning. This short video will describe the process of bipolar hemiarthroplasty in an elderly patient with a high subcapital fracture neck of femur. The main instruments needed are the retractors, the rasps, the reamers, a Chandli retractor, various head trials, various stem trials, a packet of cement, complete box of instrumentation, and general surgical instrumentation. A power drill and saw are useful, though not always necessary, because a nibbler or a giddy saw can be used. The surgery is performed under spinal anesthesia and I usually leave the choice of anesthesia, anesthetics and method to my patient. The patient is fixed firmly in lateral position so that the patient's body doesn't move anteriorly or posteriorly during surgery. The part is cleaned and draped and for draping, we deploy bio-occlusive orthopedic drapes, drapes which come with sticky ends so that we can get an excellent draping keeping the operative area away from the rest of the operating theatre including the anesthetist who will be behind a curtain. The foot is identifiable under stockinet. The incision is made over the flare of the greater trochanter. It's a rather small incision, four to five inches. Underneath, we can see the fibers of tensor fascia lata, and beneath them is glutei. The glutei are split with finger in the direction of their fibers. And underneath, you can visualize the small lateral rotators of the hip. Except for quadratus numerus, the other small lateral rotators can be cut with impunity. A Charlie retractor at this stage ensures that we do not need an extra assistant. And once the small lateral rotators are visualized, we cut them, leaving enough of the trochanteric attachment for reattachment after the surgery. This is an important step and will bring the head and neck into view. We now cut the neck at 45 degree to a shaft axis because in this case, it is a high subcapital fracture and thus we will have some better space for the head to be removed after the extra part of the neck is osteotomized. I use the diathermy rather generously and ensure that the field is not bleeding. I had in this case extended the skin incision a little more because I realized that my exposure was a little tight. The head now comes into view and is gently delivered with a couple of moments. Occasionally, the ligamentum teres is attached, preventing its delivery from the stabulum. And the same is now delivered comfortably after disconnecting that ligamentum teres. The head is measured using multiple devices and we ensure 
that we get a precise size of the head, an identical sized trial head is inserted into the stabulum to ensure that it matches. I always make doubly sure by physically comparing our trial prosthesis and the extracted head to ensure that they are identical in size with a preference to a slightly smaller head of metal than the real head. Using a box chisel, the entry point is chosen way back into the trochanter and T brooches broach it up to the isthmus. Special rasps with valgus orientation ream the femur. The actual prosthesis, which is non modular, is removed. Its head is tested for a suction fit in the acetabulum. And once we are sure that it fits beautifully, we insert the stem into the neck. The angle at which it seats is now fine tuned to ensure that the bipolar collar will sit with our neck cut. Now, we hammer the process in place without cement, perform a reduction and flex and internally rotate the knee to see the coverage. If the knee is stable in 90 degree flexion and 30 degrees internal rotation, it will tell us that the cut and orientation, including the length, are right. The joint is now washed thoroughly with copious amount of saline. And the medulla is kept dry by sucking by the assistant. Cement monomer and cement polymer are now mixed. In Chennai temperature, it takes about 10 minutes for the cement to set in an air-conditioned operation theater. And it takes about four minutes for the cement to get doing. At this stage, I ensure that I tuck in the cement into the dry medullary canal, occasionally moistening my finger to ensure that it doesn't stick to my glove. Once I have packed the medulla thoroughly, I take off the excess cement and pack the acetabulum so that cement doesn't go into it. This is a very important step. I maintain 15 degrees of antiversion, meaning my prosthesis is 15 degrees away from the receptor And once it is impacted into place, we remove all the excess cement there is and reduce the hip to ensure that the reduction pressure is holding the cement. After 10 minutes of the cement setting, the knee can be put through all movements to ensure that the head is covered adequately and that the head will not dislocate in flexion and internal rotation, which are the common movements which an elderly patient might inadvertently do to dislocate the hip. The joint is washed once again and after removal of the retractor, the knee, the hip and knee movements are checked once again. Chennai cocktail, which is a combination of analgesia, antibiotics, local anesthesia, is infiltrated layer by layer. And this reduces the need for post-operative analgesia automatically. Using absorbable sutures, the small lateral rotators are first reattached. The tensor fascia lata is then closed in the direction of its cut. We do not need to suture the gluteal muscles because they fall in place. A subcutaneous suture is given. And here I'm using a subcuticular absorbable suture so that the patient does not suffer the trouble of suture removal. Once again, in elderly patients, it is best to ensure that a single surgery solves all the problems of the patient. 
In abdominal sutras, we always leave an end out to, to tell the patient that only that needs to be slipped off. The ends are attached, a pad is positioned, and an elastic adhesive bandage is now applied over the hip. You can see the post-operative x-ray with excellent valgus and a good distribution of cement. As my hemostasis has been meticulous, I have not bothered to use any drain for this patient. And this is the patient on the same evening of surgery, walking comfortably in the hospital with a big smile on the face. She is an 87-year-old granny, a lightweight, thin, with a small head, and an extremely cooperative and a friendly patient. On the second day, the patient is encouraged to do stairs. And once she is able to climb up and down the stairs, we can discharge the patient. Most of these patients get operated within one or two days of their injury. And thereafter, are fit for discharge within 48 to 72 hours. In many cases, if the patient is bored, we can discharge them the next day of surgery. Thank you very much for your patient hearing of this arthroplasty masterclass on bipolar hip replacement, which is brought to you by Indian Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Thank you very much. Thank you.